Okay, are we recording? Yes, we are. What are we here to talk about today? We are here to talk about writing and improvisation and Jack Kerouac and his method and technique. We're going to be focusing a lot on the technique in this assignment. And on the one hand, we're going to have the writing. We're going to be attempting spontaneous prose, which was Kerouac's chosen method that he worked on for many years to sort of perfect and he came up with a very systematic way eventually to put it into effect in his novels, 14 of which he published in his life, autobiographical fiction, uh, something of a paradox there, but that's what they were called. There's a lot of debate there, but that's not what this assignment is about. This assignment is about the writing. We're going to try writing. And on the other hand, we're going to try and look at the writing and sort of accompany it and sort of evaluate it. And they are two separate things. There will be two delineated parts of this assignment. One will be to um, investigate improvisation and one will be to improvise. We'll try improvising first and then evaluating before even that. Um, let's introduce uh, the concept. Uh, let's introduce spontaneous prose. Rightio. Well, I've kept this this is a nice new fresh printing, but it's folded nice and neatly in my wallet since the age of 15. I'm 28 now. That makes me feel old. Um, belief and Technique for Modern Prose. This is a nice typewritten version. This is the um, reproduction of Jack Kerouac's composition of these 30 rules or maxims in his notebooks. But um, I'm going to be reading from this, slightly more legible. Um, belief in Technique for Modern Prose, List of Essentials. We're just going to focus on a couple here to get us started. Number one, I think, is uh, the most sort of essential and heartfelt and sort of summation of the whole thrust of it. It's going to give the assignment its title, I think. List of Essentials. Number one, scribbled secret notebooks and wild typewritten pages for your own joy. That's rule number one. As, uh, I'll include the image and we'll talk about the rest of the list of essentials in the assignment, in the um, written portion, but uh, I think we can start from there and talk about why I believe that's sort of the core of Kerouac's need to improvise, his... Uh, where to start? Scribbled secret notebooks. So I think a lot of um, Kerouac's encouragement for other artists and other writers is to make one understand that their um, point of view, their subjective opinion, their perspective, their tics, their idiosyncrasies, their weird, dumb, visionary, inherent personalities, the things that uh, a lot of the time uh, we try to mask, hide, or um, overly manage in daily life and even in our work is sort of uh, the main thing to bring to light, that's worth bringing to light in art to make us connect with each other and feel uh, less alone. To take a, a very literary example, listening to a talk by Allen Ginsberg, a close friend, confidant and collaborator of Jack Kerouac, another co-founder of the Beat Generation movement, he was talking about how in prose or poetry and literature, to be general, for example, um, I went out and I looked at the stars, sort of makes it too abstract and and sort of excludes you from actually inhabiting their point of view, weirdly enough. Uh, Ginsberg's point, and he says he learned this from Kerouac, was that to specify and to make it personal and to make it idiosyncratic and to include all the 
funny angles and details that are particular to your vision in writing is what makes it actually more inclusive to the reader. It makes uh, it, it, it's more of an open invitation the more you localize, the more you're specific, the more your image or your thought isn't attempting to be general, the more you like dig in to all the layers, to the nitty gritty of your own personality and its quirks, the more you're actually opening up to um, a more inclusive sort of human acceptance with the reader and with a mass of readers because the funny thing about Kerouac is for his time he was um, labelled like a savage and a Neanderthal, the typewriter and things like that but it's uh, over half a decade since, half a decade, half a century since the writing of On the Road and it still sells amazingly well and he's like a countercultural icon and there's a lot of books and come out about him regularly and new books of his um, previously unpublished works and new movies. Uh, he's still very relevant in that sense. So that goes to show uh, what Ginsburg said has uh, um, some truth in it. Um, but back to secret, scribbled secret notebooks and wild type written pages for your own joy. So the secret part to me talks is about all that stuff we were talking about earlier, the hidden stuff, to, to, to express it is to, is to realize there isn't this um, arbitrary sort of gap between your own vision and to be an artist, to be, you know, on, a, on, on that pedestal is to sort of ground it. The only difference between you and someone who makes art is the work of it, not some weird sort of um, specific educational model or um, conventional mould to fit into a fashion that's selling well at um, bookstores at the moment or whatever. It's you've already you you've already got it. You've already got the material by virtue of having a personality and having your own tastes in what you. Uh, read and consume and, and feel and see in your daily life as well. So uh, the trick is not to to write to to reach somewhere that isn't you. It's to be more you. It's to express yourself in this secret, scribbled secret notebooks. It's be as private and passionate as heartfelt. Reach as deep as you can and keep it a secret, but not not a secret without passion, wild typewritten pages for your own joy, as, as long as it's for you, that seems to be the key. And the thing about um, reaching deep is uh, number seven, blow as deep as you want to blow. That comes from a lot of his um, jazz influences, a lot of his uh, literary riffs are sort of modelled on um, jazz saxophone solos. That was, uh, beat bop was the um, emerging musical form of the time and jazz that really influenced him so the sense of having a, a thought and using literary technique to sort of blow and uh, express oneself and let let the thought just go and go and go there's a very physical sort of energy that Kerouac believed in when talking about his writing um, keep track of every day the day emblazoned in your morning that's number 23 and here we go. I have this little thing. It says the 1st of February. There's a cat there because I like cats. And I think that goes back to the being specific thing. Um, and Kerouac had a penchant for mythologizing his own life, seeing life as a, as a, as a dream, as something that's already over and we're dreaming or we're already in heaven. There was some uh, mystical context he'd put life in that... Um, allowed him to sort of uh, spiritually understand the importance of the moment and the importance of each mundane apparatus of our lives, all of it. The date is the 1st of February 2017, 
and that's very important and that's where we are number 28 composing wild undisciplined pure coming in from under crazier the better can't think of a more from a revered literary figure a more sort of forceful encouragement for improvisation uh, I'm really finding there's a lot of difficulties with me in improvisation not in looking at it, analysing it, enjoying it as a semi-passive observer but to do it that's why I'm interested in, in, interested in studying it and understanding it better which for all I know isn't the best way to go but that's what I'm trying um, I'm not sure why that is but maybe part of this assignment is going to help me work through that and understand it better, understand why other people also struggle with improvisation uh, to, what I'm saying is to improvise I struggle, I like a controlled environment, I love the idea of writing like this it's my, he's my favourite writer, has been as I mentioned earlier for many many years but what is the difficulty? we're going to bypass any of the the deep and convoluted reasons why it might be a difficulty for now by just focusing on the technique I'm going to improvise I'm going to attempt to improvise in writing and use Jack Kerouac's method of spontaneous prose and I'm going to leave it for a while look back on it and then try one more piece so I'm going to have two pieces of um, improvised writing spontaneous prose and then we're going to look back on it and just to quickly sort of go a bit more in depth into Jack Kerouac, the novelist, the writer, and uh, how and why improvisation is embodied in his spontaneous prose technique. So in his books, in his corpus of works, he focuses, whether it's on a relationship or a period of time, he'll sort of... This didn't come out of nowhere, by the way. He, 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 he modelled himself on uh, uh, Thomas Wolfe and Dostoevsky initially, wrote a very... Um, conventional and uh, mildly successful first novel called The Town and the City, which is much more of a conventional narrative uh, with other uh, uh, fictional characters that were semi-autobiographical. Like a lot of writers and artists, he uh, didn't have outright autobiography, but he wouldn't deny that a lot of his life experience was filtered through invented characters. And in meeting certain people, certain life experiences, and certain um, development or evolution of his literary technique and concept, he slowly but surely gradually developed a new technique of writing called Spontaneous Prose, and this, the novel that followed The Town and the City was called On the Road, which is his most famous work, and it um, chronicled his journeys across America with his friend Neil Cassidy, in short, and that's when he broke through and uh, found his uh, literary technique that he'd stick for for the rest of his life. It's something he uh, believed in as a sort of spiritual direction. He took his profession as a writer really seriously and uh, risked great not only uh, rejection from the establishment, but also personal embarrassment. I mean, these, these are crazy things to really open up and describe your life in a, in a open-hearted, uncynical way. Seems like it's both a natural thing to want to do in diaries. We all um, indulge in it from time to time, but to make that the, the thrust of your artistic work um, seems profoundly brave to me and um, yeah so in uh, he got he got to that point by describing in on the road a series of years with one other main character his friend and the, all the novels that followed he'd go back to a period of let's say childhood for Dr. Sachs' earliest childhood or for um, Visions of Gerard 
which chronicled his um, younger brother's uh, early death. Um, the Dharma Bums, which chronicled his journeys with the writer Gary Snyder, um, discovering Buddhism and stuff. So he'd always pick a specific time and sort of try to try to just excavate it for all its material and and cr chronologically you'd understand what happened but more than that you'd get a you'd get a representation of his consciousness at the time he'd pin his consciousness down to these moments of time and improvise in using his memory he was called memory babe as a nickname he was famed for his great memory so he'd use this memory to to fixate on a certain time of his life and then he'd tell you all he remembered but not just the this happened this happened this happened it was all about his view his consciousness his thoughts dreams feelings etc but I also, um, apart from the specific model by Kerouac, I, I see a lot of um, interesting stuff there in terms of how an apprentice writer, a beginning artist, can look at it and use it to understand improvisation. So that's what I'm going to try to do.